Blogging, um, blogging, we started blogging in Egypt in uh, the end of 2004 uh, and we started forming a small community of uh, the Egyptian bloggers and in 2005 uh, it began to play a very important role uh, on the uh, May I think it was May 25th of 2005, there was a referendum on a change in the constitution and, uh, and many political groups have decided they want to boycott uh, this referendum because they, th they thought it was a farce that changed. Uh, and the Mubarak regime uh, wanted to crack down on these protests and they used uh, new methods and strategies for the first time, uh, like targeting women and sexually harassing them, also targeting journalists and uh, stealing their cameras or breaking them, uh, and confiscating uh, memory cards from journalists they, they arrest. So, by the end of the day, there was no media coverage of, of that event, because a lot of the journalists have lost their equipment. But the bloggers who have just begun to get some uh, attention and to, to grow and to get a little bit known have been there, have participated in the protest and um, reported it and covered it. And some of them had um, uh, some photos on their mobiles or their uh, cameras, their portable cameras, so they, they put it online. Uh, there was also an effort to collect all the photos because there were not much coverage to, to collect all the photos and testimonies uh, and also SMSs that have been uh, sent between uh, uh, the protesters and their friends when they were screaming for help or uh, shouting about what's happening. And we created a document, we called it Never Forget, about uh, the uh, protest on the 25th of May. This got a lot of attention because it was almost the only coverage of the event. And this was when um, a lot of people started to try to find out what, is, what are these blogs and uh, follow up. Uh, the, the bloggers themselves and um, these bloggers started to get some gain some trust from the people because from then on they started organizing more protests, covering them, covering other events, even covering local events. Uh, and from this they gained a lot of trust from the readers and then a lot of readers and even the traditional media started to cover the blogs and uh, news the blogs covered themselves. Uh, it's very important to have that kind of uh, citizen media because even the big newspapers, they don't cover all the cities, all the places in Egypt. It's mainly news about Cairo and maybe some little news from the uh, main cities like Alexandria, but not even uh, instant news. Uh, so it's very important to have local bloggers to tell you what's happening in their local, um, in their cities, um, what's the events that's taking place, what are the important issues or problems that's happening there. Uh, for example, there was a, a big sectarian strife in Alexandria and uh, a lot of... Uh, the, it was a very long event, but the news, the um, uh, news reporters, by the time they reached, it has already happened. It needed some local Alexandrian to go and cover from their own perspective, and we had we had that. We had bloggers from Alexandria who went in and attended most of the event, and when they they returned, they wrote down the eyewitness account. What exactly they saw, what they felt. So it's very important to have uh, local, local news and coverage from uh, all the area, not just the, the capital. Another important topic that, um, that uh, was not 
uh, highly discussed in Egypt in uh, in the traditional news is about torture, the use of torture in police stations. Uh, human rights organizations for years and years have been making reports about torture cases, but in the end, it's just human rights reports that is discussed between other human rights in, um, NGOs and it's kept in drawers, in, uh, lock, in, in locked rooms. It's never brought to the public. So uh, when there was this incident of um, uh, torturing a uh, microbus driver, he was called Ahmed al-Kibir, uh, when he got tortured by the po by policemen, uh, he, they, they beat him, they uh, sexually assaulted him, uh, and they even recorded that on video on their mobile, and then spread that video in the area where he worked to humiliate him further. Now this video reached a blogger and that blogger instead of watching it as a, as a horror movie spread between people on Bluetooth, he put it, he gave it a framing, he gave it context, he uploaded on the internet and he uh, linked to it, linked linked it to the efforts of human rights organization and he brought forward the issue of torture in police stations in Egypt. From there, there were a lot of efforts. A human rights lawyer uh, tried to find that victim. Uh, uh, media, traditional media started covering that story. And in the end, we, we were able to take that policeman to, uh, to court and he got sentenced and it's very, very rare occasion that you get a policeman sentenced for uh, such crimes. So that was also one important uh, topic that um, citizen journalism in Egypt and blogging uh, brought uh, forward. In 2006, uh, in the celebrating the Eid, uh, Eid al-Fitr, which is uh, uh, our feast, a feast that we celebrate after Ramadan, there were mass uh, sexual uh, harassment. There were like mobs that targeted uh, all sorts of women, girls, even married women who were in the streets with their husband, and they sexually assaulted them. And in the beginning, everyone was refusing to believe that such uh, an incident happened. Uh, only bloggers reported it, it, and when when they started talking about it, it, it brought more people to discuss it and uh, led us to understand that this was not the first time. Some people started to uh, tell their story of similar events that they have seen in previous uh, feasts. Uh, some people even had videos but didn't know what to do with it. But when the bloggers published it uh, uh, on their own blogs and started talking about and started to discuss this as a, a very important topic, more people, like, they also gave it context and more people uh, came to them and gave them their uh, their accounts of what happens if they had videos or photos. And also this was one of the events where the uh, satellite TVs picked uh, what was happening on the blogs and started doing more uh, investigative uh, journalism, try to go and interview uh, the shopkeepers of that area where it happened and so on. If it were not for the bloggers, this would have still been a taboo topic that no one wants to believe happens in their own country. I think um, bloggers and uh, digital activists or digital uh, cyber citizens, whatever, whatever you want to call them, they still play an important role now. They still play an important role in covering the different uh, incidents. A lot of things have been happening in the country now. Uh, major uh, strikes, sit-ins, protests, uh, people getting arrested for uh, spraying graffiti. It's a lot of things that's happening at the same time and it's very hard if you're one uh, media institution to cover everything at the same time. So you get the coverage from the different people 
uh, who happen to be in these locations and have internet access, whether when they return home and they write a blog post or by uh, twittering what, tweeting what's, what's happening in front of their eyes and sometimes taking video or even live streaming what's, what's being happening on the ground. Uh, but also another important role they play is debating what's happening and debating what, what we should work on. Where should our collective efforts go? So there is a lot of debates over Facebook, over Twitter, over blogs. Uh, there is a lot of efforts on um, uh, different projects uh, and initiatives that are taking place to um, help uh, fulfill the demands of the revolution that's not fulfilled until now. Uh, it is also used not for just media coverage and debate, but also for mobilization and organization. We use it as a tool to organize a protest, to organize an event, to organize a day to blog against uh, military trials for civilians, for example. It's, it's, we, we debate what we should do and we organize ourselves there and cover it afterwards.